It's the Bush League Mud Show. It's the Bush League Mud Show. Let's go. Are you ready? Make some noise! All right, yo, yo, what is going on? We're back at you again. Another edition of the Bush League Mud Show. This time giving you that review of AEW Dynamite Slade. PJ. Be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hit us up on social media as well and follow us at Bush League MS Pod. PJ. This was a show that I knew that we probably were not going to get the same. I mean, we actually, for the most part, uniformly uh, liked last week's. Yes. Ep- I mean, I, yeah, I gave it, was... it a nice solid B. I thought it was it was fine for yeah. what it was. We knew it probably was not going to match up. I personally just flat out did not like this show. No. Uh, they were in Raleigh, North Carolina at the PNC Arena. We had JR, Shivani, Excalibur back on commentary. And um, we knew they were probably in typical AEW fashion. They were going to try to hit you with a heavy hitter in the beginning. Nope. I just didn't know <laughs> that we were going to have to go through the river and through the woods to get the yeah. grandma's house to get there, which was going to be CM Punk versus Wardlow. We kicked this show off immediately with Adam Cole and Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly coming down to the ring. So it's like, okay, so what do we have here? Cole, he grabs the mic and he talks about how awesome the three of them are and how it's a new era in AEW and how Reed Dragon is the baddest team right now in wrestling. Didn't take long for our boys, the Jacksons and Brandon Cutler, to come down. We get the mm-hmm. Young Bucks who come down to interrupt, and they're not. And and I, you said you absolutely hated everything about this opening yes. segment. I told you I didn't mind it for... The simple fact that the Jackson brothers, the Young Bucks, actually had some type of fire and intensity behind their promo. There was no goofy shit that was involved here. There was a sense of jealousy. Like, wow, we just brought our buddy back in. Already he's been taken away by these two other guys that really have nothing to do with what we had before. So they were really in their fields. They're in the ring. They didn't get an invite. They've beat COVID in two days. Um, so they get in and O'Reilly yeah. makes it be known that they were not invited in indeed. So we, we get this, this conflict and we get Adam Cole, who's the mediator. He's trying to stop all of this. And so he's playing the peacemaker role. They're all cool because uh, apparently both teams are better than, than people like the best friends cue the music there. We get best friends with orange Cassidy who comes out with a mic. You're actually <laughs> thinking that Orange Cassidy just might say a few words on the mic. So he comes down with best friends, and he immediately jumps in the ring. And now this is all while Cole is, you know, he's calling their music stupid and all that. So we get in the ring, and shit gets kicked off immediately as there's a fight that ensues between best friends and the Bucks and Cutler and Cole and O'Reilly and Fish. And then Cole hits Cassidy with a low blow. And so... The rest of the guys, they take advantage and the beat down on the best friends. That's going on. And then we end up with a stare down. Chris Statlander comes in, and she's staring Adam Cole down face-to-face. And out of nowhere, we get his boo, Britt Baker, who runs into the ring and takes out Statlander from behind. And then we get the posing and all the goofy shit that starts, and the the Bucks are going to load up for the double kiss, but Britt Baker, she decides – She's going to handle that, too. Um, go ahead, sir. The floor is yours. I, I just, just want to set this thing up because yeah, PJ absolutely hated this segment. I hated all of it. It, it. Like you said, you know, the Young Bucks could draw you in with a serious promo, but that's the problem. They've done too much jackass stuff the last couple months where you, you're just waiting for it to drop, and sure enough, it happened at the end of the promo where they were going to start doing the BS and not be serious. Obviously, they're going to come in ahead. They're going to have this. these two groups. They shouldn't be working with best friends at all. I mean, that makes no sense. Now we're mixing kayfabe real life together with the whole Cole Britt Baker. We know it was the worst kept secret in the world, but now she's going to get involved in this thing magically. That's going to complicate other storylines that she has in the women's division. None of this made any damn sense. and We didn't get a match out of it. We did not get an opening match out of this like you usually would get if there was a run-in like that or anything. This set nothing up. Now, to, nothing. Be, now to be fair, I, I, and I'm just playing devil's advocate with you right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm tr- trolling just a tad, but, but I am playing devil's advocate. 
Orange Cassidy is still one of their top merchandise sellers. That's great. You do need to justify him being on television, whether he's your cup of tea or not. You put him on at the end of the damn show. Where would you book the best friends right now? Because I actually was thinking about this after the segment, and even though like I was trying to kind of like tie some ends together, I'm like, what would you even do with best friends right now? They're kind of on the outside. Elevation's got in some good spots. Oh come on, dark. <laughs> come on, dude. I they bring nothing to the table. The fucker's minivan driving mom is get. I mean, when you have shit like that going, when you have serious tag teams like FTR in there, we're trying to push the acclaimed. Sting and Darby, I guess, are still a tag team unit. I mean, you got some big names here right now getting kind of buried. And then also, you know, undis- whatever the hell we're going to call them now in AEW, but Undisputed Era were the ass kickers in NXT. When I see them in this program, I do not get the same feeling. And we've talked about it. There's something NXT did that WWE production did to make them look like real badasses on camera because now when I Even see Even though them, they're relatively small guys. I yes. mean, Bobby Fish got a little size to them. But yes. They, but they, for their, they they're not like, big, gigantic monster no. guys. But the three but, of them together in NXT, they were badasses. They, they were they beating people. They badasses. Down. The way they felt, whatever they did, they made them look great. And in this presentation, I don't want to slam these guys bad, but they just, I don't you know. Feel they look regular guys. You feel that it's beneath them right now compared right to now, what we've Right now, yeah. Seen. Yeah. Uh, we got a video package on Wartlow, and then that got us into this match. This was a stipulation <laughs> oh. match that MJF put together. And um, I, you know, there were elements of this match that I didn't mind, and we can, mm-hmm. we can get into that as we, we break down this match, and we won't take long. We're actually going to blitz through a lot of these matches for the for the most part and kind of shrink down the verbiage a bit. But um, we get CM Punk versus Wartlow. This is based on... MJF setting this match up, and again, yeah. it is Wartlow coming to the rescue to fight MJF's battles. So we're already kind of starting to tell that story that Wartlow, who already comes across as a babyface anyways, he 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 looks like the yeah. gentle giant in a yeah. way who's just, yeah. you know, he owes a debt. That's the only reason at this point why he's still associated we're with doing MJF. the Paul White storyline from the authority <laughs> angle. So we've got MJF here. He comes down with Wartlow. CM Punk uh, uh, kind of stalls in this match. He gets down at MJF. Wardlow is, of course, waiting for him in the ring. Now, we knew this match was going to be on some bullshit because of the fact that we yeah. didn't see the chairman come down yeah. with Wardlow like yeah. he has for weeks already. So we knew at some point we were probably going to see Sean Spears. We just didn't know exactly in what capacity. We thought one thing. It ended up being another that's now going to turn into something else. But we get... Into this match, and Wardlow, he immediately starts powering Punk around, gets him into the corner, and uh, Punk is able to come back with a headlock, some forearms, and some punches. And finally, Punk gets down in the corner, and we get a slow pace that continued this match. So we get a a match where they didn't go fast. They worked as you would expect. I mean, Punk's a much smaller guy compared to Wardlow. So they weren't trying to rush anything. Wardlow shrugs off some kicks to the leg, and he tries his powerbomb symphony that we've been seeing in these squash yep. matches the last several weeks. And Punk, he's able to bail out and get out to the floor in a hurry. And then we come back from a commercial break. We got Punk escaping another powerbomb symphony that Wardlow's trying to get in there. And so he's trying to now strike away and give everything he's got to Wardlow. And they did a pretty good job of at least allowing Wardlow to yes. look like a fucking monster in yes. this match. We get some clotheslines, some strikes that finally put Wardlow down, but just to one knee. Yep. Didn't get him off the feet. Springboard clothesline, that finally got him down. Punk's right hand's in the corner. They get countered into the first power bomb, and then we get that power bomb symphony going on. He ends up hitting five of these, dude, but this ain't good enough for MJF. He gets on the apron, says that he wants more. So we get more power bombs on Punk again. Now he's pretty much uh he mostly done for for the most part, but MJF he wants Warlow to now power bomb him through a table at ringside. And he gets just that. So this gets Punk barely moving. And then Punk somehow is able to manage to beat this slow ass fucking count. Yes, on the terrible. outside, which JR, which again, I don't actually, know how the hell you let let the table spot to begin with. Isn't that a DQ? You would think. You'd think. As far as I know, this was not a no DQ match, but no. even JR poked fun at the part that yeah. the fact that this damn count was like pretty uh, a lenient one, yeah. as JR called it. He gets back in the ring and is able to beat Warlow with a fucking small package. Yeah. 
So, um, anyways, the the story of this match before we get into further of what happened afterwards, PJ, uh, mm-hmm. as you saw, MJF conflict. Wardlow not only lost the match, but didn't kind of carry out a hundred percent of MJF's orders, which was to destroy Punk. We get some finger tapping in the chest and all of that, and then we get some tension there in between both guys as if Warlow's going to fuck him up, which it got a pop yeah. from the crowd. Yeah. And I told you, if we're going to get to that through the CM Punk angle, if this is going to be the next avenue for MJF after what I feel should be Punk's first loss in AEW. It should be, yes. It should be yep. to MJF. Yep. And so if we're going to use that... Um, like well, we would have Wardlow in the actual blow-off match between Punk and MJF, then turn on MJF. Say we did that angle where Wardlow doesn't um, doesn't obige mm-hmm. and doesn't take Punk yeah. out like MJF, and then we get that going. But at least it's on pay-per-view. It's on a paid event, and it pays yeah. off, and then we can shoot these guys into the next thing. But we did it, and we haven't even had the actual MJF CM Punk match yet. So that no. was the only issue I had with that. I'm not a big fan at all of Wardlow being pinned for one, two, three I'm in not any way, shape, no. or form right no. now. But if you're gonna use the the baby face, the Hail Mary prayer or whatever, I mean, I didn't I didn't know it. I thought that this was going to for sure be a Sean Spears I running down, board. interfering, yep. and no one loses. But instead we end up penning Wartlow. Uh, I mean, yes, they made him look great. They made him look dominant. I just no, wasn't a, a big, huge fan of the way that it ended, though, with someone being pinned. They killed Wardlow tonight. No, they killed I, him. I don't think they, they killed, killed him. him. He Seven power bombs, including one through the table. How the hell am I going to believe he's going to win a match ever again when the son of a bitch can roll him up for a one, two, three after seven power bombs? I know it's punk. Right, but how do you have the energy after seven power bombs? Well, he to found an energy to crawl back pound. into the damn ring and roll him up. They killed Wardlow tonight. They did. This did not have to happen. This result, yes, make I don't him think look they strong. Killed him, but I, I okay, think a lot well, of people we had would Cody definitely be- jump off a cage to beat him one time. Now we we went from that from one of his premier matches to now this, where a small package roll up will beat this monster. Yeah, well, he is dead now. These they've got to rehab this. I thought for sure Spears would come down with the goddamn chair shot. He didn't come down with a chair at all. We get these guys the- face to face with Spears runs in to save and be the mediator between these two. But at the and Spears should have interfered in the damn match so we didn't even everyone get to saved this space. spot. No, no, we didn't. Spears, he didn't runs in, he it. stops Wartlow from tearing MJF's J- JF's head off, and then we end up getting a little bit of an explanation from MJF, which we'll get into yeah. a little bit later about what's to come because you, you didn't see the last of Sean Spears. He's going to get some of that punk action. Uh, <laughs> ne- well, I pretty much just gave it away. But anyways, moving on. Yeah. We get a match of Powerhouse Hobbs versus Dante Martin in a story that I just – I don't – what's the point at this point? I, I don't understand. I, we, is Martin in? Is he out? I didn't think he ever really was in. I don't and think so either. Martin is still – tied to Team Taz in some way and so we get this match Powerhouse Hobbs versus Dante Martin so we get another a second consecutive match of monster yes. versus small guy yeah. and Hobbs starts this match off fast he's throwing Martin all around and eventually gets him down to the floor this is all before the bell by the way and then we get some spine buster that plants Martin uh, on the floor toss him inside they, they keep the beat down going and then we get a big slam and uh, we get Hobbs then ripping at Martin's face, get some clotheslines in there and all that. Martin's able to eventually slip out of a torture rack that Hobbs had been trying to get on throughout this entire match. Hobbs then whips him hard to the floor. Ricky Starks, you knew he was going to get yep. involved in some way. He starts putting the boots literally to Dante Martin as we get ready to go into a break. We come out of that break. We get Hobbs still trying to get this damn torch rack in on a guy who's half his size. Yes. Martin yeah. slips out again, hits a springboard missile drop kick. Then we get Martin knocking him to the outside for a spring uh, springboard corkscrew dive. They get back in the ring. Finally, Hobbs runs him over, and um, through there uh, – Starks tries to offer a distraction during the match, but then we get 
Jay Lethal out of where, uh, out of nowhere, who pulls Starks off the apron, and Martin's then able to hit a quick nosedive for a pin on Powerhouse Hobbs. So two consecutive matches and two of our most promising big giant, big muscle, yep. big men taking L's, baby. Uh, I, I again, like you said, the placement of this match not good. They should, if they had to do it, space this thing out a little bit so you kind of. Re- Remember that the monster, the previous monster that lost, rolled a roll up, and now here, it may as well have been the same damn thing almost. I mean, Jay Lethal, welcome back to primetime TV. Uh, hopefully, they do better by him now uh, and introduce him. Maybe he's going to be. Where'd Leo Rush go, by the way? Is him well, and Dante fans gone, all what? throughout on on <laughs> social media on Twitter throughout the night want to know where Leo Rush yeah. was. Now, Leo Rush put up a tweet that has people thinking that. He's not in good terms right now with Tony Khan. He put up a tweet during the oh, I New thought Year's. They solved all this stuff. Well, no? he put okay. out a tweet saying to apologize and saying there's yeah. a lot of shit that he's yeah. not going to accept, and they owe him explanations. We don't know exactly what the hell that is, but a lot of people seem to think that Jay Lethal is now taking the place of Leo Rush oh. in terms of Dante Martin. So we don't know yeah. until we know. We're not going to speculate for now yep. until we get some more credible sources commenting on that. But again, it was a second consecutive match where we get a power a power guy. Guy who's dominant throughout the entire match, and we get this Hail Mary prayer quick shot yes. victory yeah. by the babyface. So I don't know. Wasn't really uh, too into the match. No. I mean, I knew that Martin, the way that they've been booking him recently, was probably somehow, some way was going to win this. But I figured yeah. if, if Punk was going to actually beat Wartlow clean with a small package, then at least we could have Martin, if he's going to win, have it be a DQ. Yeah. Have it be a DQ. One of, one of these matches should have ended in a DQ just you know, just to break things up a little bit. Because they both started the kind of the same way where the monster heat, you know, they're they're getting their shit in, they're beating the hell out of them, but they can't finish the job yeah. to make them look like shit at the end. No. And um the, uh, again, they're really trying to make Dante Martin feel like a bigger, a much bigger yes. deal. Yep. Um, so we'll we'll see where that goes there. Uh, we get inner circle. Oh God, they're this in the terrible. back, and they you absolutely. I, I think I already know what PJ is going to well, give at this show the, as far as a PW grade. Insider said you're the faction of the year. Are you shitting me? Who, yes. Who's voting for this? The inner circle. They were That's proud to announce that they was. had won the faction of the year. They're ready for Sammy Guevara to win uh, in the main event that night. The interim TNT champ. Now, that brings in Eddie Kingston to say that he's got a bad knee, and he's also blaming Jericho for Santana and Ortiz not being tag champs. Okay. So this yeah. causes a little bit of a conflict. <laughs> you get Santana and Ortiz, who are already with Jericho. They leave before this gets more serious. We get a stare down. We get Jericho saying he's going to be down at ringside later on during the main event tonight and threatens Kingston if he's also down there too. So we you know, we, we got it all over the place right now. Yes. Or, We've yeah. got common enemies between different factions, yeah. but then even they're feuding with one another. So, anyways, uh, we get a livid MJF who has announced that there is another match that's going to be happening, and next week it's going to be CM Punk versus Sean Spears. So there you go. Not the last <laughs> that we've seen of Sean Spears. Nope, and we repeat the whole pinnacle layers of Jericho or whatever the hell it was. Now we're doing that again. This is starting to get – I love MJF, but this repetitive way, I understand you want to protect him. You save him for the pay-per-views or whatever they're doing on, you know, the big time shows they want to gear him up for. I understand that completely, but now you have repeated this step now for the last damn near six months. Is this a detriment in terms of what happens when you're only running four to six pay-per-views a year? It could be. Or you're you're booking it, but like you that. should be able to have long term storytelling to get to that point. Instead of these are the matches we've got to have, and all of a sudden, their next pay per view I don't think it's until the end of February. Yeah, I mean they still got some time to go before this can get to a pay per view. Mo- I mean we got five six more weeks. Yeah. Well, it wasn't uh, as we had just talked about with that segment. That wasn't the last we had seen of MJF for the night because he came back to tell us about that match is going to go on next yep. week for Punk versus Spears. And it wasn't the last time we were going to see Cole O'Reilly and Fish either. They're in the back. They're talking about how they're not happy with Chris Statlander, and now they've got somebody to deal with her. So that cues Britt Baker to come into the shot. 
So we get a challenge now. Ms. Maurice versus Edge and uh, Beth Phoenix. Yeah. That ain't enough because no. AEW has now decided to also throw some mixed tag action in there too. There's a challenge laid down by Baker, her and Cole versus uh, versus Cassidy and Statlander. So um, there, there you go. Are you excited yes. for the mixed tag match? Uh, what Cole and Baker can do together. Well, we've seen Statlander and Baker before. I mean, we just saw her a couple months ago before the Rio thing and everything else. I mean, I I don't know where, where that's going to go or what ends this damn – are we going to have another street fight to, to end this damn thing? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm wondering. Um, One thing that I know that PJ probably was happy to see in this show uh, was a Smokey the Bear T-shirt. <laughs> Courtesy of Hangman Adam Page wearing yes. that. Uh, Page, he's talking about spending uh, 90 minutes in the ring combined with Brian Danielson where he shed all kinds of blood. He said it wasn't enough, though. It's a new year. That means records have been reset and that he needs a new challenger. So yep. of all people that I wanted to come out that would get me excited about a new challenger, it definitely wasn't Dan Lambert. No, it wasn't. I wasn't expecting Dan Lambert to be that guy. He comes down two and Two losers that he has doesn't yeah. make any sense. Um, Lambert, he talks about how Paige, uh, he gave him a little bit of credit, yeah. said that he's never yeah. used his backstage connections like Cody Rhodes, <laughs> and, but he doesn't like yeah. Paige's gimmick, though, he says, because there have been much better great cowboys in wrestling history. So yeah. that gets these guys jaw-jacking, says that um, – Anyone from the Carolinas or the Virginias trying to steal their clout comes off like they are full of cowboy shit. And Paige talks about growing up on a farm, his upbringing, and coming there to AEW instead of signing a $600,000 contract. So is that the going rate for developmental? I, I guess it was. At it, NXT. Or was that just for him? Just for him, I think, at NXT. So he calls that in itself cowboy shit for turning down the big time money to come to AEW. Now, this brings Lance Archer out. And Lambert, of course, uh, the last that we'd seen of Archer, it was Lambert and his goons yeah. taking Archer out. So he comes down, and Lambert runs into the ring where he's cut off by Paige. And then Archer gets into the ring. Lambert tells him not to miss his chance at being in the ring with the world champ. That's when Archer takes the time to then jump Adam Page. He beats him down with a chair. Sets up the blackout through the open chair, and um, pretty much all but official, we're going to get at least a one-off for a title match and give someone Poor to feed Lance the page. Archer. Yeah, so Once no again, Jake. No Jake. Is Jake on the Iron Sheik deal right uh, now? He, See, might he just got the new contract yeah. late last year. Yeah. He His hasn't. boy's back, but he ain't. Yeah. And now, again, we're hot-shotting Archer into a championship program where he's probably going to lose. This is like the third time this has happened to the guy where they shoot him up right away and to get into the title picture. And, unfortunately, we know what's going to most well, we likely happen. So far, we gave him uh, Moxley and we gave him Cody. Moxley and Cody. I mean, it's – they Not in that particular order, yeah, but – Yeah, but, I mean, they shot him up right away and you kind of knew he wasn't going to win. After this, we get Arn Anderson, who's in the back. He talks about how <laughs> proud he is of Lee Johnson and his son, Brock Anderson, who's formed now as a brand-new tag team. They're in horseman country. Anderson made mention of that, but then we get in the shot Tully Blanchard with FTR. Says that Arn is uh, rather right, but the challenge is on, and uh, Brock and Lee, they're going to get their first true test next week as they're going to be facing FTR. Um, I It's a match. Um, I wish the team name was the Glocks, but, I mean, you can't have it all, right? <laughs> you can't. Uh, we got a package of Jake Cargill winning the TBS title, and she promises she'll be keeping it, hanging on to it for a while. We get into this match now, uh, Hikaru Shida versus Serena Deeb. This What's didn't this go a match. This, this didn't really go on very <laughs> long. Uh, never really had a ceremonious uh, traditional start, really. No. Deeb jumped her from behind during the entrance and just went kendo stick ape shit all on Sheeta's knee. Did you Sheeta see how shitty the refs looked in this? And oh, I know they all look like dorks. You have to have Aubrey come down to break up the females. Not when she's swinging a god. The producer was in the ring more than the ref. Did you notice that? I, whoever the hell was on the handset, I wanted to say it was the producer or maybe the 
kayfabe security guard. He was halfway reaching through the ropes, but then you saw the ref chicken shit in the back, just letting her go to town. I'm like, what? They look like shit until Aubrey comes down, and she's the magical one that can try to stop the caning. Yeah, well, eventually she is able to kick the stick away, but she gets kicked into the step. She manages to finally get this damn thing inside the ring. And Serena Deeb unloads her on her in the corner. We get a dragon screw leg whip out of the corner. She stays on the leg pretty much the entire time. And the knee eventually gets rammed into the mat to set up the serenity lock, which the ref decided to just completely stop this match. I think, what, about two minutes? Not even Maybe. that. Yeah. Um. So after the match, we get the medic that comes out to check on Sheeta. Sheeta is upset that the ref called the match. <laughs> Deep then decides to grab a kendo stick again, go ape shit on the knee. The ref's coming to break this damn thing up, or at least Aubrey. Yeah. Deep finally leaves, so this is still not over. And then you had five women from the division come out and help. They just ran past Deep <laughs> like nothing was going on, and then and they ran past to get to over the sheet, and I'm like, now, now, wait a minute. If you just saw that happen to your friend, beat the living shit out of there, there's five of you, one of her, aren't you going to take a swing or make a little action to go? You can throw down a little bit? No, 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 not here. Christian Cage and Jurassic Express, they're in the back, and they're gloating over having the tag team title set. They will face any top five team. <laughs> that was the key word. Yes, any top five team. So we're we're trying to... Make you still give their rankings some credit. Well, I think Acclaimed is number one from what I saw in one of the rankings. Well, we ended up seeing Acclaimed We'll on see show. them, yeah, but I'm surprised they didn't speak up. Yeah, we get Alex Reynolds and John Silver who all, I mean, they were yeah. barely in this this shot here. Yeah. But uh, that pretty much just shot on the fact that we're going to get those two teams set for a tag team title match on Rampage this Friday. Can we just sign the damn Briscoes? I mean, that's the money right now. Briscoe's an FTR. I mean, if you're talking about big tag team matches, that's what I I know they're trying to develop these guys and they're trying to make big, you know, pushes with these guys and give them the limelight. But we all want them boys and FTR. But we also don't want Jurassic Express immediately their first title defense being against well, a heavy hitter team, about right? heavy hitters, but I'm just little, saying okay. they're they're kind of I know they're the champs and, and congrats to them and all that, but man those aren't we I mean they're gonna be like under if this happens they're gonna you're, be you're quiet saying, champions. What, once they lose the belts they won't be getting them back for a long no. while. If and, we get the Briscoes if, in. And I'm just saying there's some bigger matches out there that are overshat in this silver I mean this is the dork order your dark order is what you can throw at them here. It's just like come on guys let's start ramping this stuff up here because if, if you do sign this other team it is going to overshadow everything you have going on right now. Um, some that I didn't need to see on this show. That was Matt Hardy on my TV. Well, they're in Raleigh, so yes, he's in his in backyard. So and his wife the, was there ringside. Correct. We, had to show her. Yep. we we got a match of Matt Hardy versus Penta. Now we know if this is any place outside of North Carolina, Matt Hardy probably would not be scheduled for an actual match no. on Dynamite. No. But we got private party comes down with Hardy. Alex Abrahantes comes down with Penta, and before the match, Matt promises to send Penta to the hospital with his. Brother Phoenix, who, as we have a correction, yeah. by the way, we uh, thought that was an official broken arm, but they're mm-hmm. saying it was a dislocated elbow. So he is one of the luckiest son of a guns. Well, it's still a I mean, it, it looks nasty and cast. I can tell yeah. you that. Yeah. So we get this match starting off, and um, Jr. has to remind us of the time limit during this match. Penta <laughs> kicks Hardy in the ribs, but then he gets hit in the back of the head. Uh, back up, we get Hardy sent to the corner, setting up the running chop. We got some delete mat going on in this Yeah, match. he kind of threw that in there. Yeah, so we get a break. We come back from that. Penta then hits a gut buster for a two count. Then he hits the uh, double Alberto stump out of the corner for the same two count. Fear factor on the apron. That gets blocked, and then they slug it out on the on the apron instead. And then Matt hits a side effect onto the apron, gets a two out of that, and the deleting continues there. And then yeah. Matt ends up missing a moonsault 
and then we get a fear factor that gives Penta the victory. So, um, again, yeah. outside of I, I don't yep. need to really see Matt Hardy on, and we really fell off completely with highlighting and really elevating private party, I thought. <laughs> uh, once we got these yeah. guys with Matt Hardy, it didn't do shit for these guys' no. careers. No, and they were they, they got that one Impact Championship tag team match that was flown under the radar that I surprised I remembered. So they haven't done much, and then you, you see them in the backstage area with I, Aliato's secretary guy. Yeah, so I, gonna, I was just like, well, now what? what is this all about? Yeah, we're going to get into that in a little yeah. bit. Penta got the win, so that at least keeps him stringing along until, until Ray Phoenix comes back. And plus, we already know that Business ain't finished either when it comes to he and Pac and the the death triangle and Malachi Black and all that. So the, we also have Penta in this match too because yeah. we're featuring that yeah. he's going to be a part of something bigger. So after the match, Penta, he ends up calling out Malachi Black. So here he is. He's unloading on Penta with some kicks to the head. Black then goes for the mask. And then that's when we get Varsity Blunts with Julia Hart. They run down to kind of help beat Black down. This is when the fans start chanting for Brody King. Yeah. Black, the numbers are against him. We get the lights that go out again, and here we go. Former ROH Ring of Honor star Brody King is in the ring. He cleans house, and that's how we end that. So what we have been teasing for the last mm-hmm. several weeks has now happened. And Brody King is now in AEW, they, assisting Malachi Black. They have to do a better job when they bring these new characters in. And I know they get on WWE for redefining them or giving them a different gimmick from where they were. But I think AEW's got to start taking a page out of that book. Not that you have to totally rename the guy, but just assume everybody knows who he is. Because remember, you got a new audience here in TBS. I mean, they did good in the first week, a million viewers. You know, they're paying attention. And then, you know, you got on commentary, he's just shouting off. Again, just ROH guy. People don't know what the hell ROH is. You're AEW. You are the na- <laughs> you are the second biggest company right now, and I know you're talking to most. You know, Excalibur's talking to most of the marks out there. But you got to remember, you're trying to grow in reach. Who it? it they maybe they should have done like they did with the butcher, the blade, and the bunny. Like Jr. Who the hell's this guy? Who in the hell is that? You can have the crowd pop and cheer and all that, but on commentary, still keep that a little bit of a secret and then introduce that guy the next week or build him up. But we got to be marks about everything and just the kill thing it. that I would honestly do to go back to the days of how we built that up with the blade, the butcher, and the bunny. <laughs> I actually miss that. When I'm, I need a chuckle, I go who's on that YouTube. Guy? <laughs> What's the blade, the butcher, and the bunny? Who? Who? Have we exactly. seen these guys before? Yeah, well, no. And I I don't know if on commentary, JR, you know, tries to tell me, hey, guys, we got to, you know, not everybody knows who's working with who. I mean, a good base of our fan base does, a very good majority. But, again, we are trying to grow. Bro. So this is a guy they have not seen nationally. I know you want to say ROH. They've been on, you know, in Sinclair Affiliates. Let's be honest. They're not, they're, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, 1 in the morning, Seclair affiliates. I, I won't call that a syndication. I won't call that national TV. This is prime spot, prime time national We're TV. We're live, pal. You got to build these guys up more. And I mean, it was great to see him. He's a monster. He's a powerhouse in there. Just do a better job introducing him Just instead of just saying, oh, that's a former ROH guy. This. Just do a, bring him, tell him he's an AEW guy now and introduce him your way to that audience. I'll tell you someone who I wish that I could see on TV more because I think she's a badass. She's presented that way, but we just don't. There's just something missing with her. At least the AEW doesn't see if what they could elevate with her more. That's Layla Hirsch. Yeah. <laughs> she's backstage. Yeah. She's with Chris Statlander in Red Velvet. And Statlander's going on. She's talking about how she's ready for Britt Baker next week. Yeah. Hirsch thinks that yeah. Statlander's being pretty selfish for not focusing on their six women uh, tag team matches coming up on Rampage on Friday, even though their opponents were never mentioned. No, they So weren't. I'm going to assume that this yeah. is Baker, Hater. And Rebel. I, I, I'm i going to assume. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so Velvet's trying to play mediator and trying to play peacemaker and this whole thing, get, their, get them back on the same page, all that. So that's that. 
We then get into our next match. We get the acclaimed versus Bear Country. The Brody King was, already, yeah. yeah the, Brody King already looked like he was in Bear Country. Yes, he did. So I then mean, we booked our next match huge. with Bear Country. This acclaimed Bear Country match, uh, this look, was we, all yeah. This was a dark match. The rap even was, sucked. It wasn't that good. We tonight. got some references of Novak Djokovic yeah, and was, Blasting Sting and Darby Allen. This is a match yeah. that that should have honestly been on darker yeah. or elevation. Yeah. But they put the acclaimed on because clearly they're going to end up having a match with Sting and yeah. Darby. Yep. So you get Bear Country. They're unloading on the acclaimed to start this match. Max Caster. He manages to uh, get a high crossbody for a breather. We take a break. We come back, and uh, we get the uh, double choke slam um, and then a uh, double downward spiral by Bear Country. Then we get the uh, or the, the bear bomb, um, and <laughs> yeah. that, that ends up missing Caster, by the way. This match didn't really go on very long. Oh. The acclaim ended up getting the, uh, the victory mm-hmm. after Caster was able to snap Bronson's throat across the top, so... Match probably went about a good five, six minutes. Um, I don't know, PJ, what you thought of it. Again, it felt more like a, at, at most, maybe a Rampage tag team yeah. match, dark elevation, something like that. This is to get them further along in the inevitable with them losing the Sting and Darby Allen. Yeah. So, um, you know, what works for the Acclaim is going to be the rapping. Yes. That will and actually get them far and keep them relevant. Tone it down because they were back in Carolina. Oh, where they right. had the, the Duke, Duke issue. So I was thinking of that as we were just talking about it. I'm like, they might have had him tone it way down because of all that going on in that area still. Yeah, so we go through that. The acclaim, they end up winning the match. And then we fucking lights go out again. How many times yeah. do we need lights going out on one show? And we have it so close together. Yes. We don't even space it out. Yeah. So we get the lights going out. Here's Sting. He comes down with the baseball back. And that distracts the acclaim. That allows Darby Allen to come in from behind for the big beat down with their baby faces. So really, they don't need. So anyways, we get Sting beating the shit out of the boom box with the bat. Yeah. And there's that. So Well, again, going to have a problem with the bat spot later on because there's only one guy on this show or in this company that should have a bat, and that's Sting. He's known for it. But we'll get to that as we round about there. But, again, yes. he, he he did what he was supposed to do with the bat. I got a problem with the other guy with He's the bat. He's been coming out multiple weeks now. Yes, him. and it's getting a little not good, especially when, again, formatting this show. I mean, what would you say that was about 25 minutes after this yeah. is when you saw that? Yeah, so we got to fix that. We end up seeing Pac in a bunch of photos of himself <laughs> with no eyes. So he's turning into Black, Alistair Black, yeah. because it looked like he was in the same set. Yeah, he says that Malachi blinded him, but now yeah. he sees everything, and then that's pretty much it. That was so, it, yep. Uh, Pac will be back soon. Maybe they'll have a perfume match at... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I got. Blindfold Jake match. Roberts, Rick Martel, blindfold match coming up here. I don't think that match gets enough credit. No. I know both guys say that they that that match fell below their expectations, but I actually I, I love the angle leading good. up to yeah. it. Absolutely. Um, we then go to another backstage segment. We get Matt Hardy, who's being interviewed. He's not happy, but then we get Andrade, who comes into the picture and says that. Uh, they both are businessmen. They both love money, and he feels they can make a deal. And Hardy does not want to talk about it in front of the camera. He wants Andrade to step into his office, which means probably the bathroom and the locker room. I don't <laughs> yeah. know, but they walk off, and there's that. Well, maybe he took him to the Hardy compound because... <laughs> Why does Andrade never... need to associate yeah, himself with Matt Hardy? I, I don't know because we thought he was going to be with Malachi Black, and all of a sudden we forgot about that. Now he's not going to do that angle anymore. It, again, guys bouncing off way too much into different directions right now. Main event, this, in my opinion, did not need to go on as the no. last match. No. We made a big deal again that this is for the interim TNT title. We get the current champ, Sammy Guevara, the guy who never should have lost it. No. Yep. Got it back at the Battle of the Belts this past weekend versus the former champ's brother, Dustin <laughs> yep. Rhodes. Yep. So it's him and Daniel Garcia in this match. Jericho and Kingston, they're at ringside. And then we get again to present the winner with the title, David Crockett. Yeah. It's... 
Run its uh, course. We we get straight into this action here. We get Garcia punching Guevara in the face to get an early breather. Sammy then knocks him to the outside. And then there's a dive to take him down back inside. We get a G, uh, GTH attempt by Guevara that ends up getting broken up. Garcia then gets a, a shot into the face to take over this match. Get a break. We come back from it. When we do, we got Sammy, who's on the outside for a double springboard flip dive. Back inside the ring, Garcia then hits a couple of, uh, or he hits a belly-to-belly suplex. Two count in that, and uh, we get another GTH attempt that gets countered with a Scorpion Deathlock. And then Sammy goes straight into the ropes. Then we get Sammy, he's back up, and we get a crossroads for two count in this match. And, and it, it looked sloppy. It was very sloppy. It looked it pretty did sloppy. did not look good at all. Yeah, so then he decided to... Flip script, he went for a springboard. This time Garcia was ready for him, countered that into a choke, followed by a hard pile driver for a two. And then this is where, I mean, the match never really, in my opinion, like elevated to anything special. Mm -hmm. But what it didn't need was any kind of 2.0, even though we knew it was coming. We get 2.0, they get involved in this. They immediately go after on the outside, Kingston and Jericho. And then one of them gets up on the apron. Which is fine with Sammy. That sends Garcia into him, sets up the GTH, which really didn't connect that much. No, but we got the win. Yeah. And still your interim TNT yeah. champ, Sammy Guevara. I know I talked about this in the last show, but he cannot use that move anymore with Punk on the roster. He, he can't. He, I don't know who the hell's telling him, yeah, you can use it, when potentially the guy could use it an hour earlier, and it's his finisher. I, I don't understand that. Sammy's got some good finishers. These guys struggled, in my opinion, a little they bit did, with, a with lot. some of the height spots yes. they were trying to pull off. They were either looking sloppy or they just didn't I connect that well. I just don't think they well. connected that well. I mean, there were some good spots when they were stretching each other out. They were good. But then when they started trying to do some of the high spots or, like you said, that crossroads kind of slipped out there, it was, it was kind of rough in some spots. Yeah. After that, we got Sammy. He, he's the victor. And then we get Jericho and Kingston, who immediately start going after 2.0. Jericho's running around with the bat that you have mentioned and who you were referring to, Chris Jericho, now with the bat. Kingston gets in Jericho's face, called him selfish, and now these guys are arguing. And that's how we end the show on Dynamite is with Kingston yeah. and Jericho in each other's faces. The Jericho bat thing. Uh... I I don't – and, again, it's just kind of like what it just said about Sammy and CM Punk. You got the same moves. You know Sting, the icon, you build him up. He has a bat. Everyone knows that. Jericho, you don't. You usually have a clipboard and a list or other creative things he has used in his career. I Can, can Sting come back? Can, can Sting use like the uh, – maybe Sting comes out in a glowing jacket with rhinestones and he does this, you know, spreads his arms out, does the Jericho entrance. I mean, the, I don't understand why he thinks he's got to have a bat too. When we just had the bat spot 20 minutes earlier in the guy that this did the spot even, earlier. This isn't even the pain maker game. No, it's not even that. No, he doesn't have the spikes things and or anything like that. Or that, or any that kind of, no, no, none of that. So I don't understand. It, it It's strange. And I didn't think Jericho need to be reaching for that kind of stuff. He's over on himself, you know, just the name with that fan base. Um, and then, yeah, the Eddie Kingston stuff, I like Eddie a lot, and I just I don't like seeing him get pulled into this one. I I think he could be doing better things. I, I understand we're probably waiting for the Moxley thing where I don't know. I thought he was supposed to be back here the last couple weeks. When's that GCW show? And is that uh, like the, 23rd. the 23rd? I mean, if – like you said, if he appears at that GCW show before he hits Dynamite, uh, I would not be happy if I were Tony Khan. Yeah, much weaker show. I, I gave this at the very most for me a C minus. Oh, you're nice. I, well, <laughs> I mean, it didn't. The show did not totally offend me. I felt that we were just throwing a lot of shit out there out of the blue. Yeah. I didn't really like the placement of some of the matches in terms of where they were laid. Like you had two straight matches of big guys looking dominant to start the show, only to lose. Yes. we had 
um, lights going out multiple yeah. times. We we just yeah. had a lot of multiple things coming in twos that I just wasn't really uh, feeling. I felt that you could have kept Serena Deeb and, and Deeb and Sheeta off this show. You yeah. didn't really need. You could have saved that for maybe next week or something. Yep. Or at least if you're going to have those two in the ring together, give me a little something longer. But okay, we gave him two minutes yeah. and it did what it needed to do. Serena is going after the leg now. I mean, we know. Sheeta, she's gonna put Sheeta over. That's what yeah. this is gonna end up yeah, being. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I, I I thought that this is a show that if you ended up missing out on this week's AEW Dynamite, and you just wanted to go online and watch or read reviews. <laughs> that would be the <laughs> best be, route yeah. to go, honestly. So yeah, uh, that that was me. C minus for me. PJ, you gave it a F. I'm giving it the big F because you made me not like CM Punk and MJF in this one. That finish just was. And I give credit all the world to Punk for, you know, taking the power bombs and making him look strong. But the problem is he didn't make Wardlow look strong in the end. And I'm not blaming Punk for that at all, but you made me. We've been loving what these two have been doing, you know, week in and week out. And this was just such a blah. And then you didn't have anything else after that to kind of lift you up and get you out of that. A lot of repetitive matches. The formatting, again, there's issues all over with where we're putting match placements and everything. If anything, that Wardlow Punk I, main event, I'm sorry. Kick off the show with Sammy and do and do all the T interim stuff. Kick the show off with that. Get Punk on the end with Wardlow. I think I may have been – I would have liked that a little bit more if they were going off the air with that. But you let me sit on that throughout the whole show thinking, damn, that, that I just didn't like this at all. And there was no up from there. All right. Uh, what did you think, guys? We, we want to know yeah. what your comments were of the show. How would you grade it? Uh, C minus for me, F from here from PJ. That would give it a D on average. Uh, were you around the same or were you a little higher? Do you think we're being a little too harsh on the show? I know. We love to know. Yeah. We're all wrestling fans, all subjective. Leave that below in the comments. Again, another edition. This was your AEW Dynamite review for January 12th. Slade. PJ. Be sure to like and subscribe once again wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and follow us on social media we'll we'll promise we'll follow right back at bush league ms pod we'll be back at you on friday as we give you smackdown we give you rampage and we give you some news and tidbits for the week so until then later guys